Since the late 1960s, geologists have recognized that the surface of the Earth is broken into more than a dozen tectonic plates. Through geologic studies, they've been able to determine that tectonic plates move up to 10 centimeters a year. More recently, the use of high-precision GPS stations allow us to measure plate motions as small as 1 or 2 millimeters, or less than a sixteenth of an inch per year. These data have helped us understand not just overall plate movements, but the deformation that leads to earthquakes along the edges of, and sometimes even within, tectonic plates. GPS networks around the world give us a detailed understanding of how tectonic plates deform and interact. These motions are shown as arrows or vectors. Whenever we study GPS motions, we need to establish what the motion is relative to. For instance, if we want to compare North American motions to Europe, we set Western European motions to be zero and see how much North America is moving away. This way of viewing the motion is called a reference frame. The resulting data shows that North America is moving westward two and a half centimeters as the Atlantic Ocean gets larger. More typically, when we study North American tectonics, we consider Eastern North America to be stable and non-deforming because the stations are not moving compared to each other. Using this reference frame, we can better study the more tectonically active Western North America. By studying the GPS motions in different areas, we can learn a lot about how strike slip, convergent, and divergent regions deform and the associated earthquake hazard. The San Andreas in California is a famous strike-slip fault zone where the Pacific Plate moves northwest along the edge of North America. This representative GPS station on the Pacific Plate side of the boundary is moving about 4 centimeters a year. On the North American side of the boundary, this station moves just 1.5 centimeters per year, but also towards the northwest. Even though Station B is on the North American Plate, it's being dragged along as the crest it is on is deformed by the Pacific Plate. The velocity difference between the stations is two and a half centimeters a year. What does this mean for California? GPS helps us get a more detailed estimate of the overall earthquake hazard along the San Andreas Fault. In many places along the fault itself, the rocks on either side are locked together until the stress becomes too much and an earthquake occurs. The last major earthquake on the southernmost segment of the San Andreas was about 300 years ago. The south central section ruptured over 160 years ago, and it's been more than 100 years since the northern segment ruptured. That means two and a half or more meters of movement could occur if the locked areas were released in an earthquake. For example, along the south central segment, it's been more than 160 years since the last earthquake. With two and a half centimeters a year of relative movement, that suggests there could be at least four meters of slip with an earthquake that approaches magnitude eight. The larger network of GPS stations placed throughout California shows that the strike-slip deformation is broadly distributed and significant earthquakes can occur throughout the region, even well east of the plate boundary, although these earthquakes are likely less frequent and of a smaller magnitude. A different type of tectonic boundary is found in the Pacific Northwest. The region from Northern California to Southern British Columbia has a convergent boundary from the subduction of the Juan de Fuca Plate under the North American Plate. GPS stations along the coast are moving northeast at rates of about one and a half centimeters a year. Further inland, stations are moving less rapidly, while stations east of the Cascade Mountains are not moving at all. Let's look at a cross section with arrows showing the relative motion at each GPS station. We'll use a spring to represent the elastic nature of the overriding plate. Coastal stations are pushed northeast at a faster rate than inland stations. Although friction between the Juan de Fuca and North American plates has prevented our spring from releasing, when that friction is ultimately overcome, the resulting earthquake will cause the coast to jump southwest. The last significant earthquake occurred here over 300 years ago, so the next subduction zone earthquake could amount to over 4.5 meters of movement. If this rupture occurred along the entire length and depth of the Cascade subduction zone, this could be a magnitude 9 earthquake. North America's basin and range area in Nevada and neighboring states is an area of extension as parts of California move northwest with the Pacific Plate. GPS stations on the eastern side of the basin and range are not noticeably moving. In the middle of the region, stations are moving west, a few millimeters per year. On the western side, they're moving about seven millimeters per year. 
The process of slow extension can generate infrequent magnitude 6 and 7 earthquakes. It also produces the distinct basin and range topography as the area is slowly stretched and the upper crust responds with brittle normal faults. High precision GPS stations from around the world have given us unprecedented details about how the crust under our feet is moving and deforming, as well as valuable insights into earthquake hazards.